For over five years, our channel has been stagnant, sitting at just under 100 subscribers. But last season, we 7x'd our sub count. So, how did we do it? Well, to put it simply, it was our approach to making videos. This channel is about our FRC team, and for the people that are new, FRC is the first robotics competition, a global tournament that releases a new game every year that is played by hundreds of robots built by teams of high school students from around the world. Now, you can imagine that building a robot and traveling with dozens of members can cost a lot of money, which is why we have a media and business team. Their job is to contact companies to become potential future sponsors. But this is all standard stuff that has been known, and we've done this for years, so so what is this new approach that we mentioned earlier? Well, we started making videos for people instead of companies. No matter the person, whether they're a CEO of a multi-billion dollar corporation or a scouter looking for teams to sponsor, they are still human. So what kind of stuff appeals to people on YouTube? Well, most viewers come to the platform for three things, the three E's as we'll call them, to be educated, entertained, and engaged. Let's start with the first. Imagine you have a room of 100 people, 100 potential fans, maybe even 100 potential sponsors. Either way, you don't know who they are or why they're here. Your safest bet is to make a video that can appeal to as many of them as possible. Most teams, however, do not do this. They expect the viewers that they want to attract to have existing knowledge about what they do and who they are. But guess what? Here is another mind-blowing fact. Most people in the world don't know what FRC is. By expecting a certain level of knowledge from your viewers, you are essentially gatekeeping your video to people who may not know much about the subject. Our latest video, for example. The title and thumbnail are very broad. 3,000 robots versus each other. Most people know what a robot is, and well, 3,000 of them going against each other opens up a lot of questions. No specific terms like FRC or Comp Recap or even the place that we went to, Houston. The intro starts with a brief explanation of what FRC is. It sets the stakes for the viewers and it answers the question of why should we care. We slowly get more specific and then mention our team. You can kind of visualize the order of information like a funnel. A broad top that can catch as many viewers as possible that gradually gets more narrow and specific to the content of the video. A lot of teams that do recap videos just like to throw a compilation of the robot doing cool stuff without any context of what the robot is or what it's doing or why we should care. It's like trying to teach someone calculus before you even tell them what one plus one is. Now telling people what you're all about is good and all, but you have to keep the audience watching you and you you need to keep them entertained. Some small things we did to help boost that is an engaging voiceover with some supporting graphics, maybe some background music that sets the mood of the current scene. And well, if you ever need help with music, video game OSTs and classical music are some of my recommendations. Maybe use some humor to make your points more memorable, or add some animations that are custom to your channel's branding. There are literally millions of ways to edit a video in an entertaining way, and finding what works for you and your team, it takes a lot of practice. You can always show your projects to a test audience though for feedback, or maybe ask some other media team members what they thought of your video. The key to keeping something entertaining is to keep it new and keep it fresh and make sure you keep experimenting wherever you can. So you're teaching your viewers what you know and they're having fun watching, but by the end of the video, what do they walk away with? What do they engage with? Now, in movies, the characters and their stories are what drive the audience to care about them. Get emotional over, make them care. In real life, it isn't so different. What can you put in your video that makes people not just attached to your robot, but your team? What hardships and triumphs did you have and how can you show that in your video? What do you love and maybe hate about what you do and how can you make the audience follow that? Let's take the bittersweet ending of our last video, for example, and see how you could apply that. This is mostly where our story ends. We start by acknowledging that despite our best efforts, we didn't make it to the finals, but we quickly gave the viewers something else to latch onto. Still one team we had our eye on and we were rooting for. Beaverworks. You see, there's something you should know about first. Only for the video to end with cheers from our team. <laughs> Remember what we said at the start, this channel isn't just about our robot, this channel is about our FRC team. Companies sponsor teams, not just robots. One of the biggest changes we made this year was to make the entire team feel seen in our videos so that one day they can look back and point at themselves with excitement and remember FRC as some of the best years in their life. Now to do all this, it sounds daunting. Many others have mentioned to me that a powerhouse media team member would be required for such videos to happen. That is partly true, you do have to love what you're doing for to show in your content. But you don't always need the best equipment or editing skills to do this yourself. Heck, every competition recap we've done this year was shot on my phone. So, all right, let's take it back a little. We've learned about how we can improve our videos. We post them, but then YouTube spits back all of these numbers and graphs and stats. These tools will be the best thing you will ever learn, and honestly, it deserves its own video. But to keep it brief, we'll talk about the most important 
CTR and ABD. CTR stands for click-through rate, and it's the percentage of people that click on your video from the amount of times it's been displayed on YouTube. Your title and thumbnail directly affect this stat and are often the most important things to consider for a video's success. Take this for example. This robot has a secret weapon. The thumbnail isn't too busy with only one point of focus being the falling robot, and because it's falling, it's also in mid-action, making it more dynamic. Accompanied by the falling text, this also makes the viewers intrigued, making them ask themselves how falling could possibly be a secret weapon. Your title and thumbnail should be eye-catching, easy to understand, and broad in scope. Once someone clicks on the video, YouTube measures their average view duration, which is given to you with this line graph. On one axis, you have the video time, and on the other, you have the percentage of viewers that are watching. Dips in the line indicate losses of interest, while spikes indicate high points of interest or replayability. After every video you publish, look at where your viewers stick around or leave and try to figure out why they might do so. Here's an example. This is our robot reveal, a video dedicated to showing the world our robot for the first time. You can see that the line stays pretty high for the first half because we're slowly listing all of the robot's functionality. But as soon as that ends and we start just showing clips of the robot and we show things that we already have done, the viewers realize that there's no reason to stick around, that they've seen everything. And while speaking of sticking around and making videos, here are some quick fire life hacks and tips that we've learned. Number one, always have backups of your footage. You will shoot a lot of stuff over just one season. So having an organ nice system in a shared drive and local backups on your own computer will definitely save you some headaches. Number two, plan your content. Us personally, we had some rough video ideas planned for the whole season. This included our robot reveal, bi-weekly updates, and competition recaps. In terms of planning each individual video, we did some scripts, which is in our bi-weeklies, and some we just did some key points that we wanted to hit, our comp recaps, and some we had storyboards, like our robot reveal. Your pre-production will change per video, so do whatever process or method works best for your specific project. And tip number three, use whatever social media you can. Try your best to make content for every platform and cross-promote your accounts. If you can't make unique content for everything, then repurpose some videos into others, like clips of a video into a YouTube short or TikTok. And number four, this is kind of just a bonus tip. Guys, use Adobe Podcast. Look it up. So why am I telling you all this? Well, I could make a heartwarming explanation saying how I want to spread our knowledge to other teams in an otherwise undeveloped sub-niche of FRC. I could say that hopefully providing advice would help increase the competition for other FRC channels and bring even more innovation to robotics content. Maybe even say that I want to see some fresh new ideas being tried out in this genre and some experimentation. But let's be real, I just want to see FRC written on a silver play button.